Greetings Hunters! In this video, we'll talk about the best ways to deal with arch-tempered Namiel's moves. As always, before diving into the move, let's take a closer look at Namiel's danger zones and sweet spots. Generally, you'll want to stay away from the long stretch of area immediately in front of Namiel. Many of her moves come out very fast in a straight, forward motion, so it's best to avoid this danger zone. For the sweet spots, you generally want to be on the sides of Namiel's head or forelimbs. Namiel doesn't have many moves that can punish you while you are in this position. Furthermore, when you attack within the green sweet spots, pulling off side-to-side -side evasive maneuvers will come much more naturally on certain occasions. Alright then, so on to the moves. Namiel has a basic Elder Dragon Roar, albeit a bit slower. Your dodge timing would be when Namiel's arms spring upwards. Namiel's slide attack is one of the reasons why we wouldn't want to be in the danger zone. The move comes out fast and will knock you down. However, the good thing is that this move doesn't track, and only the head and the chest become active hitboxes during the animation. In this regard, the best way to avoid this move is by strafing sideways, and by simply avoiding the danger zone. If caught in a pinch, you could also roll through the forelimbs. The circling slide attack is also another danger zone move. It is notoriously fast and very annoying as it puts Namiel out of your vision. The move cannot knock you down but it can trip you. And just like the normal slide attack, this move does not track and only the head and the chest are active hitboxes. If you stay out of the danger zone, you will have enough time to strafe or roll away from the attack. If you stay within the green sweet spots, this move will completely miss you and you can do a proper, calculated counterattack when Namiel circles around you. On its own, Namel's Claw Slam is a very simple move. It is possible to iframe through the move, but it is highly advisable to simply roll away from it, as you can follow it up with a counter attack by doing so. Just like any other claw attack in the game, the Claw Slam will always come from the direction opposite to where your hunter is in relation to the monster's head. However, if Namiel does the Claw Slam on a water puddle, it summons a wave that complicates the situation. In this regard, you must make sure that you are either a good distance away from the wave, behind Namiel's elbow, or situated on the opposite side of the wave's direction. With the added wave effect, the Claw Slam becomes a very deadly move that punishes overcommitment. If you find yourself in a pinch, you should aim to intentionally get hit by the Claw Slam and not by the wave to minimize the damage. The belly flop is also a danger zone move. If you overcommit and you are caught within the danger zone, you will get punished. During the move, the head, the front forelimbs, and the body become active hitboxes. Similar to the claw slam, this move also causes waves if Namiel lands on top of a water puddle. The most effective way to avoid this move is by staying out of the danger zone and by staying within the green sweet spots. Being in the sweet spot will make it much easier for you to evade this move and the wave that comes along with it. 
you can either do side-to-side -side evasion or you can turn around and walk away from the attack. The wave that Namiel generates originates from the point of her head, meaning there is a small safe zone in between her forelimbs and the wave whenever she does this move. This can allow you to do some good positioning and counter-attacking. The belly flop has quite a long recovery, so it will be best to master counter-attacking this move. The waterfall is Namiel's ultimate space creator, as it creates a huge swell of water with lingering hitboxes that forces hunters to disengage. The two best ways to avoid this move is by Superman diving when the wave is just about to hit you, and by staying behind Namiel near her hind legs. At first glance, it would seem that there is only one big wave, but in reality, the move actually starts with two smaller waves that go into opposite directions. Whenever these waves come into contact with water puddles, a new smaller wave will be generated which will have the same effect. What this means is that if you run away from the wave and you see water underneath you, your best course of action would be to Superman dive. Another interesting thing about there being two waves is that there are two extremely tight safe spots in this situation. However, these are very risky safe spots and I would not recommend taking the risk for these. The water squirt is a very simple move. As long as you are not in the danger zone, you can easily evade and punish this move. You can stay under Namiel's chin and the attack will completely miss you. The water spray is another one of Namiel's space creators. It doesn't do much damage, but it does cause water blight and it has a good amount of lingering hitboxes. The best way to avoid this move is to continuously strafe around Namiel. The triple water beam sees Namiel line the ground three times with this pattern. The lasers themselves actually don't do damage, it is the ground explosion that has an active hitbox. In this regard, if Namiel is not enraged, this is actually a good time to clutch onto Namiel's head and interrupt with either a claw attack or a flinch shot. Otherwise, just stay away from the ground explosions and anticipate Namiel's head when she goes back into position. The marching water beam is another danger zone move. In this regard, the best way to deal with this is to strafe sideways and towards Namiel. Since Namiel is locked in the marching animation, this is a good time to do some counter-attacks. If you are caught in a bad position and you are close to Namiel, your best course of action would be to dodge forward towards Namiel's head. If you are far away, your best bet is to sheath your weapon and superman dive accordingly. 
During the marching animation, you can safely clutch onto Namiel's head as long as you are doing it from behind the water beam. The sweeping water beam can be quite tricky to evade. It starts out slow then suddenly it picks up speed in a wider sweeping motion. One way to evade this move is by rolling through the beam. You should time your roll when the beam starts moving faster. To do this, move away from the beam at first, then immediately roll towards the beam when it starts picking up speed. Alternatively, you can also roll towards the area under Namiel's chin. This is a safe zone and you can freely attack Namiel from here. And if you're already in the sweet zone, you can simply walk into position and anticipate a head snipe. And lastly, it is important to know that you can safely clutch onto the monster during this move. The water beams won't be able to hit you. There really isn't much about this move other than it is Namiel replenishing her wet state. This move causes all surrounding water puddles to incapacitate the hunter. Unfortunately, not much can be done about this other than equipping the waterproof mantle or the rock steady mantle. Unfortunately, the aquatic mobility skill does not protect against this as well. Another move similar to this is when Namiel flaps her wings. Again, you will need mantles to counter this effectively. Like the previous moves, the Torrential Wing Strike also causes water puddles to incapacitate the hunter and mantles will be needed to counter this. Fortunately though, Namiel has a habit of doing this move even without water puddles around. When there aren't any water puddles, this move becomes quite simple to evade. You can either roll towards the attack or roll with the attack depending on how you'd like to do your counter. And furthermore, the area under Namiel's head and neck is a safe zone, so do take advantage of this. The Static Discharge is the first of several electricity-based moves of Namiel. She electrifies the ground beneath her and an explosion follows. The size of the area of effect seems to be random as sometimes it would only set off the puddle directly beneath her and sometimes it would also set off adjacent surrounding puddles. In this regard, your best course of action when you see this move is to immediately move out of the water. And also be mindful that the explosion is wider than it seems. The electric wing strike is like the ranged version of the static discharge. 
The wing hitbox is only on the tip, so you should be safe as long as you're not clipped by it. This move is easy to avoid as long as you keep strafing. The electric explosion that follows depends on how wide the puddle is, so you should be careful. There isn't much we can do to counter Namiel's flying attacks. When she takes off, you should immediately sheath your weapon and just continue moving around. Her attacks don't track and they are quite easy to avoid. You'll know when Namiel is about to land as she will form her wings into a ball. You can wait for Namiel to do this move and anticipate where she lands to get a couple of hits on her head. She will be stuck in a long recovery animation during this time. And of course, watch out for those water puddles. The Shock Pounce is another danger zone move. The best way to avoid this move is to simply strafe or roll sideways. If you're good at judging distances, you can also try to outspace it. However, once water puddles are involved, this move becomes much more dangerous. Make sure that you're not caught standing on water puddles whenever Namiel does the pounce. If you're out of position, it is best to sheath your weapon and to immediately do a Superman dive. Other than being a danger zone move, the Shock Stomp can also be argued as the most important move to understand in Amiel's arsenal. Its properties are very similar to the Belly Flop, but an added effect is that it electrifies water puddles and causes them to explode. Without water puddles, the Shock Stomp can be avoided by simply moving to the side or by outspacing it. This would be a good time to counterattack as the recovery animation is quite long. During this move, you must keep your eyes on where Namiel's front forelimbs will land because that will be the initial trigger source. If the trigger source lands on a water puddle, the area immediately explodes. Next, if there are any surrounding puddles nearby, these puddles will also be electrified and will explode after a short delay. In order to properly avoid the move, you must first move away from the trigger source, then follow with a roll or a dive accordingly. When there are little to no surrounding puddles on the trigger source, you are free to do your counterattacks. The Shock Stomp is Namiel's only counter move. At times when you flinch any of Namiel's water moves, she will immediately counter with the Shock Stomp.
And lastly, you can force Namiel to do the shock stomp by clutching onto her forelimbs. This is a good way to quickly get rid of water puddles in the area. Namiel's ultimate hits very hard and will punish very greedy players. As long as you don't overcommit on your moves, you should have plenty of time to sheath and superman dive properly. The timing of the superman dive is when Namiel is about to land or when you hear the whooshing sound effect. You can also simply just outspace the move. 